Stress has been called the Black Death of the 21st century. I'm not committing to my works. There's no way I could do that. I'm waking up five in the afternoon just to sell drugs and try to make it to Blick to buy art supplies. I remember she would walk in and I would hear keys jingling. There are certain brain regions that differentiate humans from the rest of the animal kingdom. If you have only one experience, say for instance, let's, you've only seen horses. And I knew that was her and that used to just frighten me. Some of the brain regions are, that are the same between us and squirrels are involved in habit. A lot of what happens is we get energetically stuck. And you're not going to recognize this unicorn. You will think it's a horse with a particularly deforming facial tumor. We're not changing up our body or changing up our system or changing up our life. Oh, how would I perfect my art? You're not able to pick up the signal over the noise. Perfect my craft. She never physically abused me. I still be a better friend. Just verbal abuse. It can lead to a heart attack. Or be a better brother, son. Or a stroke. A restricted, can't shift set of brain regions. Extreme ravages. Hearing that for years and years and years, it it starts to catch up with you. Prior experience, prior perceptual experience uh, strongly determines what you see uh, in, in the going forward. I hit rock bottom when I drank half a gallon of antifreeze and I just couldn't, I couldn't take all the anxiety and depression of all of the years and years and years of, you know, that I packed on inside of my head and I, I wanted to, I didn't want to live anymore. Let's say you have a problem in your life. Um, and you approach the problem from a certain perspective. Uh, we call that Einstellung in psychology. And often, if you have the wrong perspective, of your limited perspective, uh, then you cannot solve the problem because the problem, the solution is outside of your problem space. Like I can't sell drugs to buy supplies for art no more and pay my rent. I have to like full-time commit to this art thing. When you're stressed, just as when you're in pain, the stress or the pain commandeers the whole body and the whole mind. A smaller subset of your brain is engaged when you're using habits. Um, that's kind of why habits evolved. They're easier for your brain to do. They strengthen over time. And as they become stronger, they become harder to change. You either have to do something about it or something happens where you're forced to do something about it, right? It's almost like, you know, the universe steps in or your body steps in and you have an actual injury. My biggest break came when I said, I'm just not going to sell drugs no more. Taking a break uh, and then coming back to the problem with a completely new mindset allows you to solve the problem. Your brain creates your own matrix of reality. Break. break. When we sit in meditation, when we focus on breath, and we focus on the way the breath moves in, the way the breath moves out, there's that space in between the in-breath and the out-breath. And that space is the space that takes us out of ordinary time. When you do something that's not a habit, you open up your brain for more influence. You fill these breaks productively in the sense that you, you expose yourself to new, new experience, different experiences, you can literally open up your mind, uh, and I mean that literally. Pieces that we've been juggling and working with in our minds suddenly cohere and come together, and something wonderful happens. We see a key to a problem we've been working on, maybe a problem in ourselves, a direction we want to take, a relationship we've been grappling with, or a whole view of the world. When we give ourselves this space that feels like boredom, that's when your brain can allow those creative ideas to come in. My art became better. I got to like hone in and practice more instead of sleeping all day and like hone in and practice more instead of bagging up. I hone and practice more instead of partying and drinking. So my art, yeah, is way better. Like I became a better artist, a better human, and a better person. And I walked out of the hospital and when I was walking home, something in me just clicked and I woke up the next day after falling asleep and I, I don't know if it was having that night of sleep or walking home at night alone and I just, I can't tell you that moment, but when I woke up I knew I wanted to make a change and, I, and that's when I turned my life around. It allows you 
to engage in things that we think of as very human. Fundamentally, a break is a questioning of what you're doing. It, it, all breaks give you an awakening or it fixes something, regardless if it's through pain. It's almost like you have to go through the growth, the discomfort, to come through to the other side to realize what you're made of, to feel that sense of freedom, to feel that sense of breakthrough. But when, when, when the break is over or the pain is over, you feel, you feel better. I don't know how to explain that, but when I cry hard, after I'm finished crying, I feel stronger. It's weird, but at my weakest, when I'm done walking through that weakness, I feel stronger.